everyone had a good day today and enjoyed your time with family and friends and, oh, man. and the recliner and the couch <laughs> and the bed and the bed and <laughs> raking leaves and or just letting the wind blow the leaves whatever brother Russ, brother Russ, you get our age you got to take a little nap well that's who are you talking when you said hours you oh. <laughs> well. Body of a 57, mind of a 22-year-old now. That's right. <laughs> you yeah. Gotta stay young. <laughs> You'll grab your yeah, that's true. <laughs> You'll grab your rejoice hymnal and stand with us, and we're gonna sing number 693. You probably know it. It's what a day that will be, because we know that day will come. Day. Thank y'all so much for, for that song. And uh, we will, I guess everybody remembered to set your clock back, amen. So it's going to take us a while to get used to get used to this time. Uh, just about 24 hours ago, it, well, it's supposed to be supposed to be seven right now. I guess that's why it's dark as, as dark as it is. Uh, I think Tennessee's one of the states that wanted to keep it the same, but I think there's a law or something in a federal law. That it has to be passed, I think, maybe in the Congress before we could uh, have it have it the time, the same time, the whole year round. I like to keep it uh, the same. Anybody feel that same way? I like to keep it the same. But uh, but if you like that extra hour of sleep, I guess you know that's what you probably don't mind it at all. But uh, anyway, great to see every one of you, and we appreciate the Lord this morning. And uh, it's just hard for me to believe it's November. How about you? I Time is just, phew. but uh, we, we appreciate the Lord and his blessings, and let's all be much in prayer uh, for our country. I know you're very concerned about this election. I am as well. Let's just pray that God will bless, and uh, let's just pray for our, pray for, uh, our newest Supreme Court justice, because you know the pressure is going to be on her if it ever comes time to make a decision. I hope. The woman's got said the children might win. How cold life's gonna be. But uh, but you know, sometimes 
when a man or woman gets on that high court, they change. And I'm and not for the better. And uh, there's a lot of blood that's dripping off our hands. All these uh, innocent babies that's been aborted. And uh, wouldn't it be awesome if that Roe versus Wade decision was overturned? I'd love to see that. You and I might live to see that in our lifetime. Oh, I know what what they're going to do if that's ever uh, overturned. They'll burn some towns down. Isn't that sad? That we that our society and many people in it reached the place they don't value life anymore. It breaks my heart. But I know there's a lot of, of women that, you know, had abortions that got saved and got right with God. And we thank the Lord for that. I know a good preacher friend of mine, uh, Shane Bruner, his wife gives a personal testimony. Of course, she'd had him. She'd had some abortions and, you know, how she wrestled with that. But but the Lord forgave her, amen, and washed her in his blood. But uh, I know you're concerned and I'm concerned. And I hope you voted if you haven't. And I'm not going to go on a tirade tonight, but uh, I hope you voted. If you've not, go vote. Amen. You know, people say, well, you being a pastor, you, you should be neutral. You shouldn't say anything about it. Let me tell you something. I got a book from David Barton. By the way, I recommend anything uh, he, he's written. He's a great, he loves Jesus. And uh, I just lost uh, my train of thought. <laughs> but, but anyway, we're, we're voting to have a right to vote in another election. What are you saying, preacher? Here's what, oh, I know what I was going to tell you. I got this book. It's an old book. I know it's a reprint that he, that he republished. And what it's got, even before the revolution and all up through our nation's history, there's sermons in there that pastors preach to the people of church. Amen. About, about government and things of that nature. So, you know what? We need to be clear on what this book teaches. And hey, we don't know, but as I read my Bible, and, I, and that that's not been fulfilled yet in Bible prophecy, it tells us that we're going to come under persecution more and more. By the way, there's Christians all over this world that they're not blessed like we are. They have to meet, they have to hide and to have church. Isn't that a shame? I hope that never happens here in these United States of America. I pray to God it don't happen, but it could. And let's, let's not take our freedom to worship uh, lightly. It, it means a lot. Uh, do you know back in, uh, most of our ancestors come from England or over in Europe, but if they didn't go to church, that's when they had a state-controlled church. It's called the Church of England. Do you know if they didn't go to church, they'd find them? And if they missed so many churches, uh, services, they'd throw them in jail. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad we have that liberty. But I recommend uh, that anything that David Barton has, has written, he's a, he's a Christian apologist and He's helped me a lot in, in my Christian life. But yeah, I've got, a, I've got a book that it has a bunch of sermons in it that preachers preached at their churches uh, concerning our country and our nation. So, uh, hey, we'll go the Bible way. We'll be all right, won't we? The reason we're in trouble today is we've gone against what the Bible says. So let's don't do that. Let's go with God. So hope you'll be much in prayer. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, my goodness. They went after us. Amen. Isn't that a blessing? Well, praise God. Amen. Amen. And she's a constitutionalist. And uh, we appreciate that because there's several on that uh, high court. They think that they're supposed to legislate. But th that's not what that branch of the government is for. It's not to legislate. It's to make judicial decisions. Yeah, judicial decisions. And listen, I know our founding fathers were, they weren't all Christians, but a lot of them were Christians. And one truth they understood, I hope we still understand that truth, is that, uh, 
power has the tendency to corrupt if you don't have balance, checks and balances. And I thank God that our founding fathers were wise enough to know that you need those checks and balances. Amen? And I appreciate that about, about our nation. But there's a lot of folk, you know what would settle a lot of problems? Just get people saved. <laughs> get, get them to Jesus and get them in the word of God. But uh, it, it is really sad what's going on. And I know she's a woman of strong faith, Brother Johnny. And I, I, I had heard that. And, uh, but let's, let's just pray for her and pray for each one that's on that high court. I would love, wouldn't you love to be alive just to have that overturned? Amen. Amen. We have a celebration here at the church. Amen. Yes. All right. Uh, Men's Prayer Fellowship, that's this coming uh, Saturday at 9.30 a.m. Come and join us. We have a great time uh, in the Lord. Wednesday night, we're going to be studying in James chapter 4. We'll be finishing up that uh, chapter. So uh, I hope you'll come and join us. That's at 6.30. Then our Ladies Fellowship. Kathy, you want to say something about that real quick? What y'all going to do? Go ahead. You can do a better job than I can. Sounds good. Y'all had about what? How many last time? 17? 18. That's wonderful. The 9th. That's correct. November the 9th on a Monday night. And then remember our youth, the youth are having an event, a cookout and a movie meet here at the church at 4 p.m. November 14th. And this will be at uh, Brother Clinton and Sister Carly's uh, home. All right. Okay. Let's go ahead and take our prayer request. Has anyone heard about Sister Taylor Price shared some good information with me. You know, we had special prayer for Brother Anthony. I heard he was doing, doing better. Has anybody else heard anything like the latest in the last few hours? Well, I had heard that he had had double pneumonia and while he was in the hospital that he contracted COVID somebody I, but I know he has COVID right that's what I was told he did uh, continue to pray for brother Joel it's good to see him here uh, today keep lifting him up to the Lord um, brother Lawrence yes remember brother Lawrence Boone you if you're watching this brother Lawrence sister Mary we love you and uh, we miss you and our prayers are, are with you Thank God for them. You, you remember to pray for Brother Lawrence and Sister Mary. Also, Brother Kenneth King. Remember him. Remember Sister Mary Ann. Any others? Oh, my. Oh, boy. Remember uh, Josh Price's aunt, Debbie. I understand her cancer has come back and it's metastasized into her brain. So please remember uh, Debbie in your prayers. Any others? All right. Remember Ricky, sister? Amen. Amen. Yes. Any others? Amen. Remember Brother Bobby. I like to wear boots. <laughs> Amen. I've got a bunch of shoes. Anybody in here like shoes? <laughs> it's funny. I, uh, I'll go with Kathy shopping, and uh, she'll go to the mall looking for certain things, and I'll come back with two pair of shoes, Brother Johnny. <laughs> I don't know how that happens. But, 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 but it happens. <laughs> 
she'll go looking for something and I'll end up getting something. I guess I need to go with her more. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Any other prayer requests? All right. Let's remember Dawn. And then your, your sweet sister. Yeah, remember Doris. All right. Any others? Yes. Amen. Any others? How about the unspoken request? Us as a family. Head by can and will. Let's gather around the altar. Let's have an altar of prayer tonight. church in Johnson City, wonderful people over there. Let's continue to pray for them. Brother Scotty, would you please open us up in prayer as y'all pray together? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you for this day. What an honor, what a privilege it is that we can gather at your house, Lord, and lift up your name. And we know it's all because of you being lifted up on the on the cross. pray, isn't it? Amen. Talk to the Lord. You know, we can sing like an angel. We can be a great orator, a great speaker. But there's nothing that Satan fears more than a saint of God on their knees crying out to God Amen. and praying. Amen. <laughs> I've hey, there's power in prayer Amen. and in talking to God. And uh, we, I thank God that we have a praying church and this prayer chain that our church has. I know it's been a blessing to me, to my family, and to so many other families. So I just want to say thank you all for taking time to pray. Amen? Amen. Jesus took time to pray, and he was God in the flesh, wasn't he? Manifest in the flesh. He prayed. We need to follow his example. Sister Cindy, Sister Joe, you come on at this time and sing. You pray for them as they come to sing.
Which like the red one? Then you'd understand why I can't hold back the tears. Now my life is so different since I gave it to the Lord. And I want to give him glory while I'm here. I stand before only by his 
because of grace. <laughs> it's all a grace. You know, we talk about faith. I know we have to have faith in Jesus before we can be saved, but there's something comes before faith. It's grace. We, we couldn't have exercise in faith if it wasn't for God's grace. Amen? We know by grace are you saved through faith. And that's not of ourself. It's not of yourself. It's of God. It's a, it's a free gift. And we thank the Lord for that. Open your Bibles up with me. Thank, thank you, Sister Cindy, Sister Joe, for blessing our hearts with those songs. Boy, I enjoyed them. Amen. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'll let you remain uh, seated here this evening. Not going to read a lot of verses, but we're going to read, we're going to start reading at verse 35, and I'm going to read down to verse number 38 here's what God's had on my heart to preach to you tonight and this is a very personal message it's, it's a personal question what kind of fool am I we could title it what kind of fool are you but uh, we got to include ourselves in this what kind of fool am I let's read the word of God but some man will say, and we know this is the great discourse on the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and he's talking about this, and he says, but some man will say, how are the dead raised up? It's as if the Apostle Paul here, he anticipated someone asking a question about this. But some man will say, or woman, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? <laughs> verse 36 thou what fool it's in the bible thou fool that which thou sowest is, is not quickened or made alive except it what it die 
And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but by grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain. Listen to this verse 38. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him. And to every seed his own body. Let's go to the Lord in prayer again. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name we thank you for your blessed word that we've just read. Which is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I thank you Lord for every individual that's come back tonight for church. Come back Lord to worship you and lift up your name. And Lord now I just ask that you will anoint me with the Holy Spirit. Lord, use me as your vessel, and God is your mouthpiece. Speak to me and through me into the hearts of your people. Challenge us, Lord, from your word. We'll give you the glory. We'll give you the praise for what's accomplished in this message. In Jesus' name, amen. When one is called a fool by our fellows, it may be an indication of poor judgment. But when... A person is called or classed as a fool by God. It's time to pause and consider. If a person lives in conformity to the world, God brands that person as a fool. And if you and I live in the conformity to the will of God, the world, in many cases, brands you and I as a fool. My question to you and to myself is this, in what class are you, in what class am I? Or in what class would you rather be found? By whom would you rather be called a fool? Mm. I want you to consider this as we preach a few minutes on what kind of fool am I. I want you to consider this as a personal question that you need to ask yourself. Let's look at a few of these. Number one, in Psalm four, chapter 14, verse number one, it says, The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God. The fool is a character who in the scripture is marked by wickedness as well as by what we would call folly. His or her defect is moral as well as mental. There are a lot of mixed up people in this world, aren't there? There are few who wish that they could make themselves believe that there wasn't a God that was ruling the destinies of humanity. By the way, that's, that's one of the big battles that we're in in this spiritual warfare. We, uh, I don't know how many Americans uh, call themselves atheists, but I know, I know we, there's, a, there's a, a pretty good sized number. I would hope there's a lot more people that, that are Christians and, and believe in God than they are atheists. But there are people that deny that there is a God. I feel sorry for them, don't you? Because they don't have anywhere, anyone to, to, to go to that they can call on and trust. But I've heard of a lot of people uh, they'd be on an airplane and, and the airplane start having some uh, difficulties and, and be about ready to go down and crash and people didn't believe in God. You know what was the first thing that came out of their lips? Oh God. Or oh my God. Did you know that our creator God made men and women because he wanted to fellowship with us. He wanted to uh, be, have an intimate relationship with us. But we know what affected that relationship, don't we? Sin. Sin separates from God. It's the thought of a righteous God that disturbs a lot of minds and consciences of those who desire to participate in the momentary pleasures of wickedness. Many would be happy seemingly if they could do away with hell and future punishment. Notice this, what else the Bible says about the wicked and the fool. The wicked through the pride of his conscience will not, listen, through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. He hath said in his heart, I shall not be moved for I shall never be in adversity. He hath said in his heart, God is forgotten. He hath hidden his face. He will never see it. He hath said in his heart, Thou wilt not require it. Oh my. I hope none of us here this evening or anyone that's watching this service, I hope you're not this kind of fool. 
Then secondly, there's another uh, type of fool. And it's that fool that just lives for the pleasures and the material things of this world. You remember Jesus talked about a certain a rich man uh, whose uh, crops brought forth pamphly and bountifully and he thought within his heart, he said within himself, I'm going to tear down the barns that I have and I'm going to build greater barns and I, I'm, I'm going to say to my soul, soul, take thine ease and, and rest and, and enjoy yourself, be merry. Only one thing wrong with that. That person didn't consider God. Listen, when you just live for material things, that's not much to live for. Because your material things and my material possessions, as quick as we got them, we could lose them. But if we have the Lord, we can lose everything in this world, but we still have an inheritance. Amen. We still have a blessing and a bounty from God. And Jesus said, a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. There's people that, that look at having riches as a great blessing of God. And it can be a great blessing of God. It can also be a great blight on your soul and your heart. Because we're told very plainly in the scriptures, trust not in uncertain riches. Now let me just make clear, it's not a sin to be wealthy and rich. But it's a sin to worship that wealth and those riches. You'll find that some of the wealthiest people even in history are individuals in the Bible. Abraham was a wealthy man. Solomon was a wealthy man. Job was a wealthy man. It's not a sin to be wealthy, but it's a sin when we trust in that wealth more than we trust in God. Amen? Amen. All right, let's go on. So the Lord came to him and told him, all this that thou fool, listen, thou fool. Now, if God calls you a fool, that's what you are. Amen? Amen. You say, what a terrible thing to say. No. I hope God don't look at you and look at me as a fool like this fool. All right. He said, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall these things be which thou hast provided? He leaves his all behind him. He hasn't made provision for the true life. In Isaiah chapter 55, verse number 2, listen to this. The prophet says, Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, the Lord speaking through the prophet. And he says, And eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight it itself in fatness. God wants us to enjoy the the fruits of our labor. There's nothing wrong with that. He, he tells us in his word that, you know, we, we need food to nourish our bodies. We, we need fluids to, to keep us healthy. And, and, and the Lord understands that. Amen? But let's not just live for physical things. You see, the fool speaks as if earthly wealth could supply the needs of their immortal soul. And it can not do it. That's why I'm on the, I believe it was, uh, was it Black Friday? Well, it was October the 29th, I believe, what, 1929, when the stock market fell. There was a lot of wealthy people because wealth was their God. You know what it said that they did? They would be in 10-story buildings, and they were jumping out of those windows of those buildings to their death because they couldn't imagine living their life without their wealth. My friend, I hope that, uh, hey, that you don't live like that. I'm not telling you it's, it's sin for you to have riches. If you've worked for it, you've, you've earned it, that's wonderful. Just never put it in front of the Lord. See, that was their God. And they couldn't live without that God. And therefore, they took their own lives. Then we read there's another kind of fool. It's a fool that thinks he's always right. We read in Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 15, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. The thing that keeps a fool from being wise is that he or she thinks that they're right in everything. Anybody ever met an individual like that? I mean, they're right in everything. You're always wrong, they're always right. That's another message. <laughs> but, hey, you're not always right, and I'm not always right. Guess who's always right? God is. The Word of God 
is always right. So a fool may think they're, they're smarter than everybody else. They think they cannot make a mistake. And therefore they don't ask anybody advice. And they, they never inquire of God or anyone. The rule that a, this type of fool goes by is to do what he or she thinks is right in their own eyes. And to walk in the way of their own heart. They're a fool that's governed by their eyes and not by their conscience. A fool mistakenly thinks that the path of self-indulgence leads to everlasting prosperity. As one person said, none but a fool is right. They're always right. Others are always wrong. But the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14 and verse number 12, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Let us hope that you and I are not this kind of fool. If we're going to be a fool, let's be like the Apostle Paul. Let's be a fool for Christ. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 10, we are fools for Christ's sake. I remember when I was a freshman at Maryville College living in the dormitory. And, you know, we had what was called quads, and we, uh, we, uh, we uh, had uh, bathrooms and showers where we would go. And I remember one time going to the restroom, and I read on the side, on, on that uh, block there inside a bathroom, I saw on the wall somebody had written something about me. And here's what it said. Remember now, I'm 18 years old or 19. Mark Street is a Jesus freak. I looked at that, and I sort of started pitying myself and feeling sorry and started crying a little bit and so why'd they put that there about me? But then as I got to think about it, I got a blessing. They knew I loved Jesus. <laughs> and then I started praising the Lord for what they said. And I th as I was getting ready this message, I, I, I read this somewhere. There was a Christian, and they were be being persecuted and mocked and maligned and laughed at. And being, they were called a fanatic and, you know, putting them down because they were Christian. Well, this Christian that was being persecuted just had enough and looked over at him and said, Well, yes, I'm a fool for Christ. Whose fool are you? I think that was good. I'm a fool for Christ. The apostle. The apostles were fools. Why? On account of Christ. Because it was owing to their preaching Christ. That the world regarded them crazy. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse number 18. It says. For the preaching of the cross. Is to them that perish foolishness. But... <laughs> Unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Amen. Thank God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Yes, my friends, divine wisdom and power at their seeming lowest are far above man's highest. And furthermore, God will not accept man's highest standard. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 19. The wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. I love what Paul said in Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 7. He said, what things were gained to me, these have I counted loss for Christ. Now let me ask you a, a personal question and ask myself this question. Wouldn't you rather be this kind of fool? A fool. For Christ. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Sister Brenda, would you come please and everybody bow your heads? Heads are bowed, eyes are closed.
It's not a pleasant thing to have people laugh at you because you're a Christian. The world don't understand you and the world don't understand me. And as I was studying this message, getting ready, I, I thought back in my life. And I'm so glad that I was never ashamed of Christ. Oh, I got uh, laughed at. I got put down. But you know, uh, Joseph got put down in the Bible. Daniel got put down. You read about the prophets. They got put down. They got laughed at. But you know what? Who is in better shape when it comes time to die? Or who's in better shape when it comes time for us to pass from this life? It's not that person that denies God and curses and blasphemes the name of the Lord. The person that's better off is that person that loves Jesus and has been saved by God's grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But I can testify tonight that some of them very people that laughed at me and mocked me, I pray to God that they never forgot that old Mark was a fool for Christ. And guess what? I'm still today a fool for Christ's sake. If that's what the world wants to call me, that's okay. Because if that's what the world wants to call you, and you're being given a hard time at work because you're a Christian, just let them laugh at you. You just keep shining the light of, of the Lord upon them. You just keep being a Christian in front of them. You just keep praying for them those maybe that laughed at you they might be loving and praising the Lord with you at church real soon you don't know we don't know but I'd rather be called a fool for Christ's sake and honor him and exalt him the world can say what they want to about us I tell you what I don't want said about me I don't want my God to call me a fool amen Heads bowed, eyes closed, nobody looking around. You're here this evening, and you, you have been attacked because of your faith. Maybe people giving you a hard time. You say, Preacher Church, I can really relate to that. Will you pray for me? I need prayer. I want, I want, I want to be a true Christian. I want to be a good uh, witness and testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. I need help. Pray for me. God bless you. Somebody else. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, God bless you. Anybody else pray for me? I, uh, and you know, if they know you're Christian, they'll give you an extra hard time. I know what I'm talking about. They will, they will test you and try you to the furthest extreme that they can to get you to do something or to say something that you know ain't right. And then, boy, they'll rub your nose in it and they'll, they'll mock you and laugh at you even more. But I'm here to say, you be true to the Lord. And the Lord will take care of you even in that abusive atmosphere or that persecuting atmosphere environment you're in. You are a witness for Christ. Don't ever forget that. You're an ambassador of Jesus Christ. And if others put you down for it, you just pray for them. You love them in the Lord. And you may have the opportunity someday to lead that very individual to Christ. You may see them show up at church one Sunday and the power of God get a hold of them and draw them to Jesus and then get saved. I guarantee you, they get saved, they won't laugh at you anymore. They won't mock you because of your relationship with the Lord. Anybody else, would you raise your hand and say, pray for me, preacher. I do have it a little hard at work. Would you pray for me? Anybody else? Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your holy word. Lord, I don't want you to look at me or call me a fool but I'm honored as brother Paul was if the old world calls me a fool for Christ's sake so be it Lord there were several raised their hand and Lord you know what they're going through in that atmosphere where they work I just ask Lord you'll give them extra grace and Lord a, a fresh anointing upon their lives Lord, they wouldn't be going through what they're going through if they were not living for you and being that.
that Christian, you'd have them to be. So God, just strengthen them with the sweet Holy Spirit and with your grace. Lord, we don't want to make a mockery of you. We want to bring the lost to you, Jesus, so they can be saved. We love you. We praise you. Thank you for your word tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We're going to sing a verse of just as I am. And you need to come and use this altar. We want to give you that opportunity to do that right now. All right? Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. It has become to be a lamb of God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 